What kind of porn do the straw hats watch? Being at sea can really increase your semen. So the straw hats need to get off so we can get on with the show. In this video, I'll be going over all the porn categories of choice for each of the straw hats. All right, first up, we have the simp of the crew, Sanji. I'ma be real, this guy is not making it past the home screen of the website. As soon as he sees the smallest bit of skin, he's busting his nose and a nut. I swear if you walked in on him, you're gonna think he murdered Smoker with a pool of white and red liquid he's rolling around in. What's worse is that Sanji's rule of only using his hands in the kitchen is still true, so he uses his feet every time he rubs one out. Sanji's lucky though. His German genes have given his body incredible durability, so his refractory period is basically non-existent which means he can bust continually like he was a nutcracker. After a while, the homepage doesn't really do it for Sanji. He needs something more to get him going. As many of you know, Sanji's a pervert and loves to watch without being noticed. This happened in the Wano bathhouse and almost every day when Nami goes to the bathroom. Growing up in a toxic household, Sometimes Sanji wished that he was invisible and could escape his family. By turning invisible and watching women, he can justify this act of pervacy by telling himself if he's not seen, he can touch his peen. Which is why I think he'd enjoy the voyeur category, which basically means a person watching other people bang. But I guess if he's watching someone else watching other people bang, does that still make him a cuck? That might be too philosophical of a question, so let's tag team our scholar of the crew, Nico Robin. This might surprise you, but Robin does not watch any porn. No, she only reads it. Late at night when the crew is asleep, she whips out the Fifty Shades of Grey series and uses that to stir her imagination. But it would be cheating to say that all she does is get off with books. So if she were to watch a type, I'd have to say roleplay. She enjoys all different types, but her favorite is obviously librarian. Something about getting a bigger brain while receiving brain does it for her. And it's no surprise that Robin uses her devil fruit to touch and eat herself. In a previous video, I went over all of Robin's kinks. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description. We got to ask ourselves, why does she enjoy role plays and fantasies the most? Well, for someone who had a harsh reality growing up, all Robin wants to do is escape into a world where she can let go. And let go she does. All the books she reads fills her brain with fantasies. Even though she isn't watching anything, she can imagine the scenes as vividly as if they were playing in her head. This is also why Robin hasn't simped for anyone in the show. She has a falsified and idealized sense of what a man should be like. The closest she'll get to the perfect man is Frankie, because he's the goat for real for real. So next, let's go over the goat Frankie. Now a lot of you think Frankie's poison is something about skimpy clothing or public nudity. But really, Frankie wears the underwear as a stylistic addition to his clothes and nothing else. He even called himself a pervert for wearing it, but he has never once flashed someone or been aroused by other people wearing underwear. Wear. No, the biggest turn on for Frankie is technology. If you're caught up, you know that he grew a third leg on Egghead seeing all the cool inventions. I mean, he was damn near ready to give Vegapunk some head for all the technology on Egghead. Which is why Frankie's point of choice is anything technology related. So this could be animated videos, deep fakes, or anything with robots. Also, whatever he watches has to be in VR. So if you see him with his headset on, I'd leave the room unless you want to be covered by his super. But that's not the only way you could tell he's about to blast. Since his hands are too big, he uses his extendable robot arm to play tug of war with himself. Also, to get in the mood, he changes his hairstyle into a schlong. It's pretty cool that he never needs to cut his hair, unlike Zoro, who cut both his hair and his foreskin off with his swords. Moving on to our swordsman of the crew, Zoro's interesting, because he makes all the girls fold for him, but there's only one person that actually makes him blush. Oh wait, never mind, there's actually two. Zoro gets so flushed when he sees Toshigi that he can't even face her because it reminds him of his childhood friend, Kuina. After she fell down these stairs, Zoro never made peace with the realization that he never beat her in a sword fight. This manifested in him having a deep-rooted attraction for strong women. He even folded and turned red as a rat when Nico Robin complimented him. But how does this translate to his category? Well, Zoro's admiration for strong women leads him to enjoy pegging porn. There's something about a man being dominated by a woman that brings back memories to Zoro. The powerless scenes Zoro witnesses lets him tap into his fourth sword style and has earned him the title of King of Hell. His orgasms are so strong that the influx of dopamine affects his hippocampus and has led to his trouble with directions 
and erections. But lucky for him, he's not the navigator Nami is. So let's go over her of choice. What you need to understand about Nami is that her lust lies in something deeper than sexual pleasure. After Arlong came, to her village and destroyed it, Nami needed to work as hard as she can to get in her bag and pay off that dirty fisherman. So ever since a young age, her perception of freedom revolved around getting money. Because of this, she couldn't just work a few extra jobs. She needed to scam people, steal, or whatever is necessary to go band for band with Arlong. As she grew up, this obsession became less about Arlong and more about the thrill of getting richer. She got off on the idea of scamming those poor fools for every berry they own. This excitement blurred the lines between lust and greed, which is why Nami opened an OnlyFans to make more money and finally achieve financial freedom. So I guess the only porn she watches is of herself. Her profile, The Naked Navigator, features scenes of her in weather girl outfits or just rolling around in money. Once you hit the donation button on her stream, there's a 100% chance that she's gonna make it rain. She also does collabs from time to time with guest co-stars like Wappledy Munch or Trafalgar D. Law, the surgeon of dick. Although I've never seen her invite a Fishman guest. I wonder why. And with that, I'll transition to talking about the Fishman of the crew, Jinbei. Now, some of you may know this, but I hate this blue fat fuck. But I won't use my hate to give him some weird ass category. No, Jinbei doesn't need my help with that. Because when he's browsing the hub, his dead fish eyes lights up as he sees one thing. Fish bangs. What's a fish bang? Let me break it down. When a mermaid and a merman love each other a lot, they bang. Pretty simple, right? But then the merman realizes he doesn't want a relationship, so he dumps her. The merwoman is heartbroken, so she gets revenge by smashing multiple mermen at once, aka a fish bang. But Jimbei is one disgusting whore shark. Regular fish bangs don't do it for him, so he watches one merwoman versus five sea beasts. He's deeply ashamed that it's come to this and flips the fuck out whenever someone walks in on him. It's like that scene in Spongebob where Gary walks in on Spongebob looking at barnacles. Jinbei gets so excited by these videos, he uses his fishman karate to grip his meat even harder. He's lucky that his hands are naturally lubricated, otherwise the friction would be hotter than the hit he took from Akainu. But he did take that hit to save our captain Luffy. So let's go over Luffy next. Being our latex captain of the crew is so fitting because he's protected from all forms of lust. Luffy has never once shown any romantic interest, even with some of the hottest girls in One Piece. I swear, even when the baddies on Amazon Lily were giving him a hand, this man did not fold. I'm sure all of us would be rock hard as soon as we saw Boa, and that's before she even uses her devil fruit. So how is Luffy able to resist? Well, it's because he's a Sigma hat pirate. The only thing that gets his schlong harder than armament hockey is the thought of meat in his mouth. And unfortunately, it's not the meat you're thinking about. Yes, Luffy's one and only attraction is towards food, which is why he watches food which is basically just those aesthetic videos of food you see on Instagram. So instead of gangbangs, Luffy is busy watching mukbangs. His addiction to food has gotten so bad that Sanji now has a backlog of recipes requested by Luffy. Sanji thinks most of them are beneath him, which, by the way, is the first time Sanji is not considered a bottom. So he lied to Luffy and tells him that they're out of ingredients. But his lies are rudimentary compared to a brave warrior of the seamen, Usopp. Now, before I go over Usopp's category, let's play a game. I'll give you three choices for his favorite category and you guess which one is right. Option one, scripted porn, where there's a story before the action. You know, the one you always skip. Option two, porn where the girl is bigger than the guy. Option three, point of view porn, where the girl is talking to you as if you're the one in the video. All right, lock in your guesses by clicking the subscribe button. Well, if you picked option three, you'd be right, but also wrong because he watches all three of these categories together. So it's a story porn with tall girl who talks to Usopp while he polishes his Kabuto. Very specific, I know. But there's a reason for this. Usopp is a pathological liar. He gets off by telling people his fake stories, which in this case would make him a pornological liar. And what's the fakest story there is? Any story in porn before they bang. What about tall girls? Is it because Usopp likes to be emasculated like Zoro? Well, not exactly. Usopp has always admired the giants ever since Little Garden. He's looked up to them, literally. So when there's a tall woman on the screen, he feels a certain connection with the actress. 
And who doesn't want to have a connection with a naked stranger on the internet? Well, that explains option one and two. But what about the point of view porn? Well, it's even more specific than the actress saying words that turn him on. She specifically tells Usopp how brave and strong he is. This is literally Usopp's dream, to be recognized as a brave warrior. So when he hears those words from someone else's mouth, he gets an unearthly sense of validation that hasn't been fulfilled yet. After finishing to these videos, Usopp feels as heavy as his 100 ton hammer. Also, his meat is the same size as his nose. Unlike Brooke, who unfortunately has no nose or meat, but he still watches porn for the sheer pleasure it brings his eyes. Wait, he doesn't have eyes. <laughs> Brooke has been perpetually edging himself ever since he became a skeleton. And because he has no meat, it's impossible for someone to suck the soul out of him, which is why he became known as Soul King Brook and gained superhuman abilities. All his devil fruit did was revive him. The powers he has in the show are all a result of no fap. He has reached the highest state of enlightenment, but must constantly edge himself to keep these powers. So we watch the only other words Brook says more than <laughs> is panties, which is why his category would be anything related to that. So lingerie, Upskirt, wedgie porn. Hey, I'm not one to kink shame, but why is it that Brooke is so obsessed with panties? Well, after being on a ship for 50 years with nothing to fuck besides your dead crewmate, a man gets lonely. So seeing the slightest bit of revealing clothing or skin can turn him on immensely. Just like Brooke is in limbo with the world of the dead and the alive, he can relate to the panties as they serve as the protector of the poon and he's searching for laboon. So overall, we can safely say that Brooke just wants to bone. All right, next up, we have Chopper. Nah, I'm just playing. I'm weird, but I'm not that weird. So if you enjoyed this video, follow me to a therapy session because you're going to need one if you're subscribed for more One Piece and anime content. Bye bye.